So we found a team that are exploring gravitational waves from black holes. We're going to join the exhibit now and uh, find out more about what they're looking at. Hi Stuart, so what exactly is a black hole? Well, a black hole is a very, very dense object that's so dense that the gravity from the objects is so strong that even light, even photons, can't even escape, and hence the name black hole. Because you can't actually see them? You can't see them. Brilliant. So uh, how, how are they formed? You've got an exhibit here, so... We have an exhibit here to try to understand gravity uh, better. Now, we all remember the picture of Newton watching the apple falling from yep. the tree, and he interpreted gravity as a force, or so a force pulling down on that apple towards the ground. Now, Einstein interpreted gravity quite differently and uh, said that Newton had a too simple explanation of what okay. it was. Now, in actual fact, Einstein said that space and time can be curved or distorted by the presence of mass. And so here we have uh, like a two-dimensional simple universe where we have some mass, so for example like our sun, uh -huh. uh, and this uh, places on the fabric of space-time and it distorts. And it's this curvature that then planets like our Earth then orbit around, so follow, following the curvature of space-time. Now if you have a very dense object like a black hole, you can imagine that the curvature is uh, is very great when it's yeah, going down. The, the hole's very deep in the, in the sheet. Exactly. Now, you can't see this with our eyes because, as I said, light can't be emitted because the gravitational pull is too strong. Yeah. And one way which you might see it, well, if this is the fabric of space-time and you have some kind of disturbance going on here, so if you had two objects rotating around each other, then the curvature is changing and you can see this as waves propagating ah, okay. out That's across it this fabric. So, of course, this is a rubber sheet, but if we were able to see the fabric of space-time, then you could see waves, which we call gravitational waves, pro propagating out from the source. OK, so now we've found out how gravitational waves are formed, we're going to find out how they're actually detected. So, uh, what's this equipment you've got, you've got here? Okay, so the equipment you see here is a Michelson interferometer and uh, Stuart explained about gravitational waves passing by and what they really cause is kind of deformation of space-time. Okay. And uh, a Michelson interferometer like this can actually measure the, the uh, deformations of space-time. Uh, so what you see here is a laser and this laser shoots light of a very single frequency. Uh, to this beam splitter, which is actually a mirror that only lets through half the light and the other half is reflected. Okay. So half the light goes this way and half the light goes that way. And because these two are mirrors, the light is reflected back towards this beam splitter and then it's combined. And because you have light with one single frequency, um, it starts interfering. Just like when you put uh, two drops of water in a pond and the uh, ripples move out, they kind of... Um, enhance each other or they cancel each other out. Okay. So uh, then you see an interference pattern and it actually comes on this screen here. But it's with a tap the mirror here that you see the fringes change. You see? Now for gravitational wave detectors the path length of these is not long enough because right. Um, uh, gravitational waves cause such tiny uh, displacements they only cause like 10 to the minus 18 meters of displacement wow, and that's nothing. a thousandth of an atomic nucleus <laughs> size so that's extremely small so what we actually have is detectors that are like three or four kilometers long wow it's actually quite impressive something that's say a thousand times smaller than the nucleus can actually be uh, detected yes exactly so what does the future hold then for detecting gravitational waves the future is, is really very exciting. On the one hand, the ground-based detectors will be made to work with very advanced technology by about 2013, 2014. But in about 10 years' time, we begin to explore gravitational waves from space. And wow. we have here the laser interferometer space antenna. It's okay. a space-based detector. There are three spacecraft in orbit around the sun and the distance between them is about 5 million kilometers. Oh, wow. Which means that we are going to be detecting gravitational waves and with far higher wavelengths or much lower frequencies. And you can see here a list of different sources, but I think what is very important for us is this thing called a small black hole falling into a big black hole. In doing so, it actually goes around the space-time geometry of this big black hole and 
helps us to actually map the whole space-time around the big black hole. So it's like a stellar cartographer. Absolutely. It's like map making. <laughs> and we here, here we are opening a new window which actually maps the space-time geometry now. Not that just of uh, uh, Earth or just the solar system, but of the entire universe. And listen, and listen to this.